Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and today I'm coming to you with another update to my Sentinel Queen, my Herald of Purity Necromancer. Now, first of all, if you haven't seen the full build guide, just check the link down in the description below, uh, or it will just be on my channel uh, with the title Sentinel Queen, a comprehensive guide to a Herald of Purity Necromancer. Um, I've just decided to uh, basically, first of all, uh, have a little bit of an FAQ session, uh, just a very small one about a few questions that keep popping up um, on my videos and on my stream about this build, just to kind of, you know, put it all out there. So I'm just going to go through that. I'm just going to grab my phone here and have a look at a couple of the questions. Uh, so first question that is uh, coming up is from Sino X. Now Sino X asked me, "Hey Badger, if I socket my glorious vanity jewel into my tree, it doesn't give me corrupted soul. It gives me something else. Is that caused by me not having the exact same number as yours on your glorious vanity jewel?" Uh, I can very much answer that. It was in my last video, but I will quickly go over it again. To get the Corrupted Soul Notable with your Glorious Vanity Jewel, you actually need it to be in the name of Doriani. Now there are three names that you can get, and each uh, divine role that you use on your Glorious Vanity is going to get you uh, one of the three names. Now the only uh, time you're going to get Corrupted Soul is if you have the name of Doriani. Uh, so that is very important there. So hopefully that answered your question, Sino X or Sino X. All right, the second question is from Anders Spaling, and Anders Spaling asks me, with those two daggers, the two daggers are being the uh, cold iron point daggers, just for everyone, with those two daggers, why not more physical gems like Brutality? And I don't get death mark. It is only 59% at level 20, quality 20, where Brutality is 69% and Awakened, gives a negative 10% physical resist. Now this is kind of like a double question here, so I'll answer the first part. Uh, why not more physical gems like Brutality? Uh, the big thing is our spirit offering, as you can see down over here, is actually giving our minions 30% uh, of their physical damage as extra chaos damage. This is meaning if we use Brutality, that chaos damage is completely nullified and they no longer do any chaos damage which is actually a massive damage nerf. So that is the reason that we actually use Deathmark instead. Now that does bring me to the second part of the question. Um, why using Deathmark? Deathmark is actually extremely important on bosses. The AI of your Herald of Purity uh, uh, Sentinels are not very good, but with Deathmark it means that they instantly focus that boss. Now. Even if you've got a more sheet DPS without Deathmark, you're having way less actual DPS against bosses because they're not targeting, it, targeting the boss properly. They might be hitting some minions around, that sort of thing. So that's pretty much it with that one. So thank you very much for the question, Anders Spaling. Hope I answered that. All right, third question. We have a question here from Negative Shielding. Now, Negative Shielding asks us, I think I'm a little bit confused about the build. How do I kill enemies to summon the Sentinels? Running around Blood Aqueducts and only summoning them if I find a rare enemy. Look, you've kind of hit the nail on the head there. When you initially go into a map, then uh, all you're doing is first clearing just with your uh, uh, your summon Holy Relic. And I can quickly show you here. I'll, I'll jump into a map for you. Uh, just to quickly show you, I do have a, a waterways map here, a, a tier 16 waterways map, and we'll just quickly show you here. You're not actually going to be spawning your sentinels unless you do actually come across a rare enemy. However, the clear from your Herald of... Uh, oh, sorry, the clear from your Summon Holy Relic is more than enough. As you can see up here, I still don't have any sentinels, but I'm clearing the trash mobs very easily. We then will hopefully very soon come to a uh, rare enemy or something like that. We'll just keep going through here. I did get one because I must have killed one enemy, but we'll find a rare enemy. Where are they? If we will, well, let's get a let's get a fast uh, fast mod here so we can try and find a rare enemy quickly. And we're not still finding any rare enemies, but as you can see, I have actually summoned a few because I have managed to get a couple of last hits with my cyclone. 
we will come to a rare enemy soon, I am sure. Here we are, rare enemy. So I cyclone a little bit, and then I actually stack up to four there. Um, so that's basically how it goes with that. So I hope that answers your question. Look, there's not too much we can do about that negative shielding, um, but fortunately for us, the clear on our Summon Holy Relic is more than enough. So uh, yes, thank you very much for the question. All right, we have another question here from over not powered over not powered asks us man how the hell do you see dead mobs i can't idk if it is for the configuration or what xd now i uh, assume that he is referring to desecrating mobs and then trying to corpse target them to summon them so i'll just quickly show you here so the first thing to know is uh holding down a will let you target corpses. Now, you're not actually going to be able to target corpses if you don't have a skill on your skill bar that needs corpse targeting, like raise zombie or uh, raise specter or even like a detonate dead or something like that. If we actually then put our raise specter onto our toolbar here and we hover over, we can actually see that we start highlighting enemies, meaning that we can summon these very easily. We can target summon these with our Ray Spectre extremely easily. So hopefully that helps uh, you summon your Stygian Silverbacks and your Host Chieftains. Thank you very much for the question, Over Not Powered. We now have another question from Viktor Kiosev. Viktor Kiosev asks us, Hey, love the video. Thank you very much, Viktor. Uh, but can you please advise us on the bandits best? Uh, the bandits, yes, uh, something I didn't actually really talk about in my build guide, but the bandits are extremely simple. Kill all the bandits. And thank you very much, Victor, for your question. And uh, I'm just going to look for another question now. Uh, we have one more question. I think, I think I'll finish off just with this question uh, at the end here from uh, Dark Cloud. Now, Dark Cloud asks us, I was thinking about running a Guardian version of this because uh, Guardians have a little more defensive options. What do you think? People have asked me this a lot, uh, mainly on stream. Um, uh, they do ask about the Guardian uh, and whether this build can... Uh, be done with Guardian. Yes, 100% it can. I may even in the future do a little build guide for the Guardian version of this as well. It does have a little bit more inherent defenses, meaning you're not going to get one shot as much. Uh, you do miss out on your Cast While Channeling Spirit Offering set up, however. Uh, the other thing that you miss out on is because of that, um, your uh, Spectres and your Summon Holy Relic and your Herald of Purities are constantly getting Energy Shield Recharge, meaning that every now and then on a Guardian, your uh, Summon Holy Relic or your Spectres are going to die. They're going to die a little bit easier than they will on Necromancer, especially on Necromancer because you're getting the uh, plus two to uh, level of Minion Gems as well, which is increasing their health. Um, it, is, it is very easy to do. I don't know exactly what uh, ascendancy points you would take. I would have to have a look at that a little bit more, but it is definitely something you can look at. This build works extremely well with Guardian as well, especially if you're looking for that hardcore variant. So thank you very much, Dark Cloud, for uh, that question. Actually, I've uh, actually just seen one more question here. Uh, one more little question. Uh, and this is from... Aixat Amir. Now, Aixat Amir asks us, is it okay to leave your resists uncapped? Uh, now, I think this, uh, I've actually improved my build a little bit, so my resists are actually already, wait, what are we doing? They're already uh, capped right now, or almost capped, as you can see, 76, 74, 74. They're a little bit uncapped, but even if your resistances are, say, at like, you know, 62 or 65 or something like that, um, you're getting resistances in maps from two extra ways. First of all, you're getting it from Spirit Offering. I do this, my resistances go up to 113, 97, 97, which is very, very big. Um, that's actually pretty massive. The second thing is you are getting more resistances from your Bone Barrier. 
At the moment, uh, this is giving us plus three to all LE resistances per minion, up to 30%, which means up to 10 minions. Right now, I only have five minions out, meaning with my five Sentinels of Purity, that's reaching 10, that's another 15% on top of that. So with my Heralds of Purity, I would actually be reaching uh, 128, uh, 112, uh, 112, uh, basically, right there, is what I would be reaching on our, on our uh, capped all res, which is almost enough to uh, go into Ellie Weaknesses maps and still keep your resistances all the way up. So that is, uh, that's pretty much it for the FAQ for today, guys. Um, but I'm actually going to also talk about a couple of upgrades I've made to this build. Um, you're probably wondering how is he even squeezing in anything. I, I thought he squeezed everything into this build uh, as much as he could. Um, but I'm going to show you here. First of all, we have upgraded our amulet. Our previous amulet only had plus one to level of all physical skill gems, but this amulet here also has plus one to level of all strength skill gems, meaning that our Herald of Purity is getting one extra level. Now, I actually bought this amulet myself for 5x without the uh, fire resistance and strength, and I actually managed to double Exalted Slam, top tier strength, and top tier fire resistance. Don't ask me how I did it, I have no idea, uh, but it happened. So that's pretty good. Uh, this amulet is now worth astronomical amounts, so um, be wary of that. The items that I am showing you today are worth a lot. The second item is uh, this Damnation Veil Astral Plate. Now, I bought this Astral Plate with the uh, the uh, Guata Litzies, a prefix modifier with the max life and increased max life. And also it had uh, the 18% cold res on it and the reduced attribute requirements. What I did is I bought this, I crafted a uh, suffix to block all of the suffixes, and then I Warlord's Exalted Orb slammed plus one to level of socketed active skill gems. Now this actually took me five attempts. I, had, I went through five other astral plates for this. Uh, and I got it in the fifth attempt. Uh, and then I also slammed fire resistance on the end after I crafted the uh, life as extra maximum energy shield, which is pretty insane. And then I also managed to get two white sockets here, meaning this is now a five off color chest piece. Uh, uh, it's, it's really good. It, it's a really good chest piece. Once again, worth a lot of money. What this does, because we get an extra level here and an extra level here, this brings our Herald Purity up to a level of 32, which is awesome. Now, keep in mind that if I was to go any more levels, there is a bit of a diminishing returns on levels with any sorts of spells once you get past around level 30 to level 32, level 33. So the only way I would get more levels is if I double corrupted my chest to give me, you know, more plus one to gems or something like that, which is not something I'm probably going to be doing anytime soon. We are at a very nice cap here. And then the last thing I did is I just got some nice boots with a little bit extra strength. So it just gave me a bit extra life. What this did in total is it actually means that my effective health is a little bit less than it was before. Uh, with uh, Spirit Offering Up, my effective health is around about 700 life uh, plus energy shield less than what I had before. However, I have been able to craft some Chaos Res on my amulet and some Chaos Res on my boots, meaning that before my Chaos Res was about negative 15%, uh, now my Chaos Res is plus 16%, which is extremely amazing. The very last update, update I have made is to my uh, Animate Guardian, sorry, <laughs> I was trying to remember the name, Animate Guardian. My Animate Guardian, now instead of having a Gruthkull's Pelt, as uh, you would have seen in the build guide, I have swapped that out for Garb of the Ephemeral. Ephemeral? Garb of the Ephemeral? I think that's Ephemeral, that's how you pronounce it, whatever. Now, Garb of the Ephemeral is an amazing chest piece uh, to give you support. So the first big thing that this chest piece is giving you is enemies nearby cannot crit you. Meaning that basically this negates all crits from me, which is crazy. 
It's, it's amazing. Um, the, the second thing that this is doing is this is actually giving also, uh, uh, I cannot, uh, this is also meaning, let me try that again, uh, that my move speed cannot be lowered below base value, um, which is great for things like Uber Elder or Tar on the ground or anything like that. Um, uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So it's just even more support um, around me for uh, that. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, and there's other bonuses that it gives the uh, Guardian as well. It's really fun uh, when he uh, Super Saiyans. Uh, actually, I'm gonna quickly show you that now. Uh, I'm gonna get uh, my Guardian to Super Saiyan for you. So we're just gonna go to the coast and we're gonna uh, watch him get 10 stacks and then he will go Super Saiyan. All right, let's go Guardian boy, let's go. Where are we? We'll go over this way and go up here. All right, so we'll bring him up here. I'll let him spawn up here and he's gonna go for it. All right, watch him. So he's getting his stacks up. He's attacking enemies, getting his stacks up. He's almost there. He's very close. And he'll Super Saiyan very soon. There he goes. That is the garb of the ephemeral buff happening right there. Uh, absolutely amazing, uh, very, very fun to watch it when that happens in maps. Uh, but that's pretty much it, we're gonna jump out. The other cool thing uh, is he, you know, he does get a little bit bigger. And uh, the downside to the garb of the ephemera where uh, you need so much strength and intelligence does not matter for your animate guardians. They can equip any item up to level 100, which is uh, pretty amazing. That is everything I have to say, guys. So thank you so much for uh, watching. Um, just a little plug uh, for my Discord. Uh, I have started a Discord, so there is a link below. Uh, you can uh, get that and uh, jump into my Discord if you'd like to. And if you do enjoy what I'm doing, uh, definitely come and try and uh, check me out on stream whenever I am streaming. You know, sometimes I might not be streaming in your time zone, so sorry about that, but I'm trying to kind of extend the window that I stream in a little bit. So if you ever see me on, just follow me at twitch.tv slash thisisbadgergaming. Again, I'll chuck a link down there. Uh, and as always, please don't forget to subscribe for more interesting content like this. Uh, in the future, I'm gonna be doing a couple of uh, currency guides on how to make good money. And I'm working on a little secret project at the moment that you will definitely be able to see if you come watch me stream as well. So thanks guys, uh, and until next time, Badger, out.